Dzień za dniem, noc za nocą. Nasze życie upływa pod bezkresnym niebem. Marzymy o rzeczach wielkich, ale życzymy sobie rzeczy prostych. Myślami wybiegamy do przodu, ale jesteśmy świadomi, że życie toczy się tu i teraz. Spoglądamy w niebo z dobrego miejsca na ziemi. Kujawsko-Pomorska Szkoła, witamy ponownie. Skoro wakacje, to podróże. Jeśli podróże, to znajomość języków to rzecz oczywista. A takim najbardziej oczywistym, najbardziej uniwersalnym językiem jest oczywiście język angielski. I o ten nasz język angielski zadba dziś pan Grzegorz Fidala. Po raz pierwszy w naszym studiu, ale mamy nadzieję, że nie po raz ostatni. Dzień dobry panie Grzegorzu. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to be here with you today, and uh, I'm really happy to be with you on the first English lesson during holidays. But don't be afraid; it's not going to be a traditional lesson. So uh, we are not going to um, talk about vocabulary only, but just like it was said in the introduction, we will deal today with a slightly different topic. I hope it's going to be useful to you if you plan to, um, if you think about studying in Britain, or maybe if you think about traveling to the UK in the future when uh, it's going to be possible to visit. Because the two places I'm going to talk about today, Oxford and Cambridge, are really beautiful. But that's not the only reason why we are going to talk about it. Uh, the more important reason is that these are really small cities, but they have two most important, most prestigious, most notable universities in the world. Both of them, Oxford University and Cambridge University, almost every year get to the top um, in the rankings for the best uh, universities of the world. So how do they do it? What is the connection between these two cities and our region, Kujawsko-Pomorskie, and what's interesting in Oxford and Cambridge for football fans, fans of cars, or fans of pop culture, film, literature, and celebrities. I'm going to talk to you about it today. So, let's start. This lesson will deal with a couple of, um, uh, a couple of facts. First of all, I'm going to share some basic facts about geography, um, a location of both cities, then a quick look at history, then we are going to deliver some information about both universities. For those of you who think about studying abroad, we will go through famous people who used to study uh, at Oxford or Cambridge, and then finally pop culture correlations with some vocabulary revision, which is necessary to first of all understand this lesson, and second of all to talk about it later on if you want to share it with your teacher, with uh, your examiner perhaps during Matura exam, um, or with your English-speaking friends. So, let's start from the map. A quick look at a map um, is enough for us to see that uh, Oxford and Cambridge are located very close to London. Everybody knows London. If you um, if you think about England, if you think about Great Britain, probably London is the first place which comes to your mind. But uh, let's not limit ourselves to, to this place, because it's enough to take a very quick train or a bus, and within one hour you can get to one of those two cities. So Oxford is uh, about 90 kilometers northwest of London. Cambridge, almost the same, 89 kilometers uh, southeast of London, or, uh, sorry, not southeast, north of London, but they are more or less in the similar, uh, similar distance. What else is similar about those two cities is that they both have similar population. They are smaller than Torun and Bydgoszcz, bigger than, let's say, uh, Wrocławek or Brodnica, uh, but in terms of size, uh, they are not the biggest cities um, in Britain, because those of you who are 
interested in football, for example, may be familiar with cities like Liverpool and Manchester for their famous football clubs. Um, those of you who are fans of Speedway, for example, may think about Wales as the region where Speedway is very popular. And those of you who um, uh, like politics, uh, perhaps know more about Belfast and Northern Ireland uh, or Glasgow, which is um, uh, the most important city in Scotland. But let's come back to those two cities. First of all, let's have a look at Oxford. Um, if you take a look at the pictures, they seem to look pretty similar. So for those of you who like um, wandering around and discovering new places, uh, it's enough to spend one day in Oxford and one day in Cambridge to discover everything that's beautiful there. Green gardens, wonderful colleges, um, great architecture and buildings, views on the river, because both these cities are located by the river. But I would like to start this story uh, from looking at their names, because they, it's pretty interesting to know where do these names come from. If you think about Torun, we all know the legend about um, the Leaning Tower of Torun and the Vistula River, and that's why this is a legendary name for, uh, and origin for the, um, uh, for the name of our city. Uh, what about these two? Well, first of all, when it comes to Oxford, the city was, first of all, the town was located by the River Thames, and the name came from the combination of two words, ox, and an ox is a huge animal, similar to a bull, which is uh, vu in Polish, whereas Ford, apart from being a uh, brand of a very popular car, uh, in English means the place where animals can go through the river uh, because the river is shallow. So in Polish we would translate this name as um, brud uh, lub mielizna. So if we put those two elements together, Ox and Ford, we will see that the name comes from uh, the place where it was possible for the farmers to go with their animals through the river. And here we have the first connection between um, Oxford and Kujawsko-Pomorski, because if we look for a similar place or similar place name in Poland, well, you don't have to go very far from here because we have Brodnica. So we can say that Oxford in England, uh, when it comes to the name, is similar to Brodnica in Poland. The situation is a little bit different um, with Cambridge, because uh, Cambridge being also located by the river, but by the river Cam, well, the water was not so shallow there, so the, the town uh, was located by the river and built around the bridge. That's why the name Cambridge. Cambridge means the place where people built the bridge over the river Cam. Now, one more name you can find um, on the internet or when you read about those two cities is that they sometimes are called uh, together as Oxbridge. So for people who are interested in universities or cities, you will know that Oxbridge make the two most important universities and two most important cities in, uh, in terms of university studies in the world. Okay, let's move on. Oxford, the story of the city started almost 2000 years ago, first of all, like I said, as a farming industry, but very quickly developed as the house to the, um, to the trade, to traveling, moving from the, um, from the town to London as it was based very, um, very close and it was easy to navigate through the River Thames to London. But it quickly started to build and grow um, uh, its importance when the university was set there. And it was at the very beginning, at the very end of the 11th century. But I'm going to come back to this later. Right now, Oxford is a really important tourist um, attraction because many people, especially from the United States, or uh, Japan, um, Asian countries want to see the city which um, looks a little bit like Torun, I would say. So the, the center is very historic, it's made of the same stone. I mean, many buildings are built of the same sandstone. 
Well, whereas, like I said before, Oxford is slightly smaller than, um, than Torino or Bitgosh because it has about 156,000 people at the moment. It is famous for great architecture, fantastic colleges, but these are not the, the only facts because for those of you who are interested in um, um, automobile industry, this is also the place where the biggest factory of Mini Cooper cars um, is located. So I'm going to show you a picture in a moment. And another connection between Oxford and Poland is that it is a partner city with Wrocław. They have been uh, connected for about 20 years now. If we look at Cambridge now, um, it's also located by the river, by the river Cam, and it was set up by the Romans uh, about 2000 years ago, so more or less at similar times like Oxford. Uh, and it quickly became also a very important trading center for the Romans, for the Vikings as well. As you know, the Vikings invaded um, the, 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 the country that we now call England. And uh, very quickly, um, after about 100 years after Oxford, the university was set up there. It was in the um, 13th century. Uh, and the, the, the people who live in Cambridge tend to say that although Oxford is bigger, because Cambridge has a population of about 130,000 people, Cambridge is prettier. But, well, this is only the opinion of people who live in Cambridge. You have to go there to decide for yourselves. But for those of you who are fans of sport, I think it would be a very important piece of information to know that Cambridge is also the home of football. It all started there. It's not a legend, it's a fact, and I'm going to talk, talk about it a little bit more soon. Now, let's have a look at, at Oxford. What does it look like? First of all, the city um, is called the city of dreaming spires. Now, you probably know the word city, you probably know the word dream, but what about the word spire? Because um, you may not be very familiar with it. So, a spire is the top of the building, like a church or a cathedral um, or a tower. So we have lots of such, um, such places in Oxford. That's why it's called City of Dreaming Spires. So in Polish we can translate it as uh, Miasto Drzemiących, Miasto Śpiących Iglic. So a spire is Iglic, are this very, very top of a high building. What's also beautiful um, in Oxford in terms of tourism and walking around are colleges. The word college means part of university. So in Polish we would say is Wydział lub Departament. Whereas in England this is, all, this is a, one of the units of the university. Each of them have their own buildings, have their own beautiful courtyards with um, green grass, which is green almost all the time of the year because, uh, well, snow very seldom falls in Oxford and Cambridge. It happens perhaps once or twice every five or ten years. That is why it's very easy for them to keep these places uh, really green and uh, pleasant to, to look at and to wander around. The third important thing about, um, about uh, Oxford is that it has a number of great libraries. So, uh, the most important of them, it's called Bodleian Library, is uh, more than 500 years old. It contains more than 100 million volumes, uh, which means books. And uh, what is funny or interesting is that one of the most important librarians there is also a man from Poland. I don't know his name, but uh, if you speak Polish, you will be served. In the, uh, in the most important um, library of the University of Oxford. One more interesting fact about Oxford is that uh, you can find there the oldest public museum in the world, the Ashmolean Museum. It was first opened to the public in 1683 and uh, it's signed to the Guinness Book of Records for this fact. The museum itself contains a collection of art, of uh, Remsons, and it's not, uh, let's say, the, the most uh, beautiful or important collection in the world, but still, this is the first museum in the world, we can say. 
Now, one very strange fact is that um, Oxford has some connection with Hitler. Uh, you may say, wow, what can be the connection between this city? Well, he definitely didn't study there, but uh, during the Second World War, uh, Hitler planned to use the city as his capital, his capital in the island after, of course, conquering the island. That's why um, the bombings were so hard around all England, but it has never bombed um, um, the, the, the city. I mean, Oxford was never bombed during the Second World War, and that is why we can be so happy walking around and seeing all the historic buildings together with, for example, medieval castle, which is in the centre of the city. And one more funny fact is that Oxford was actually the capital of England very long time ago because it happened in 1642 during the English Civil War. For one year, the capital was moved to, um, to Oxford. This is like the story of Krakow and Warsaw. Um, uh, I don't know if you know that even Płock was for some time a very important city in Poland, so not very far from, from uh, Kujawsko-Pomorskie. We can visit a place which was very important. Oxford was important from that historical point of view too. Now, like I said before, it's uh, very important for those of you who like very uh, good-looking, strong and fast cars because uh, Mini Coopers are built also uh, in a factory just next to the city and uh, it looks really interesting because there is a one big Mini attached to the wall of the factory if you go to have a look at there. So those of you who like cars have to visit this place when you go to Oxford. Now let's move on to Cambridge. Cambridge, if we think about, um, if we think about the city, seems to be pretty similar. Maybe it's not so beautiful architectonically, but um, it's very beautiful in terms of uh, the location. Because through the centre of the city, we have a very winding and well-regulated river, the River Cam. And uh, as you can see in the picture, one of the most uh, important, popular ways of spending free time uh, when you visit Oxford, um, sorry, Cambridge as a tourist is punting. What is punting, you can say? Well, this is the activity that you see here. It's not sailing, it means puivanie płaską łodzią. You can do that in Oxford too, because these two uh, cities have a kind of a rivalry between them. So what you do in one place, you can do in another, but it's much more popular in Cambridge. So punting is pływanie uh, łodzią po rzece. The next important thing about Cambridge is that it has lots of beautiful gardens. So the picture behind me is uh, the botanical garden in Cambridge with a collection of thousands of plants, of insects and animals which you can observe from very um, close distance. You can walk around there and um, look at all the beautiful uh, flowers, smell. Um, there's a beautiful smell over there, so it's really good place if you want to relax and uh, see how the perfect park may look like. One more interesting fact about uh, Cambridge and the university is that two students and later professors of the University of Cambridge who discovered the DNA helix, uh, which is spirala DNA in Polish, so Crick and Watson made this discovery while they were uh, at this university. Now, what is even more important is that they didn't announce it when they were at a lecture, when they were at university with some other professors. No, they did it sitting in a pub. And the, the picture you can see in front of you is the plug. The plug means uh, tablica pamiątkowa in the pub named Eagle, where they, sitting over a drink, uh, started talking to other professors, of course, their theory of uh, the composition of the human DNA. Pubs and restaurants are really important because uh, in, in both um, those cities, if you go there, every corner of the street you can uh, visit, of course if you are over 18, visit a pub or a restaurant where you can uh, see the traditional uh, life because usually they haven't changed for the last 100 or 200 years. So you, will, you may be lucky to sit in the same chair that Crick and Watson were sitting 50 years ago, for example. 
And one more important fact about Cambridge is that this is the place where football, in our modern understanding, was originated. The first records of playing this sport uh, come from 1579. In some chronicles of university, there are some remarks of the game of two groups of people with a ball. The problem with the first, um, first games was that uh, they were often very brutal, finishing with fights and injuries, so uh, the authorities of the university didn't like it too much, but it was exactly the opposite with, uh, with the people. But later on, when um, the society wanted to civilize this game a little bit, in 1848, um, um, some football maniacs or some football uh, fans created a set of rules which were later observed uh, for more than a hundred years uh, and made the, um, uh, the substance, the establishment for the modern football. This was called the um, Cambridge Rule. And like I said, it started being used, uh, first of all, in England within the next 10 years and then in other cities in the world, which started playing football as well. So for those of you who think that football started either in Italy or in Spain or Argentina or Brazil, well, no, it all happened in England. And also the first football club in the world, um, which was established in 1857, was actually uh, created in England too, it was Cambridge University Football Club. All right, now let's move on to universities. There are two of them and uh, they change from time to time with this uh, top position in the ranking of universities. Right now, for the uh, three or four consecutive years, the University of Oxford, the oldest surviving university in the English-speaking world, uh, is taking the lead. It was established in 1096, more or less, because um, historians are not precise here, but the rapid growth started in the 12th century, in 1167, when King Henry II uh, actually told English students not to go to the University of Paris because of the, f um, of the fights, because of the quarrel between France and England at that time. So more and more professors started to settle down in Oxford and the colleges started to grow very quickly. By the way, the first university in the world was in Italy. It was the University of Bologna. Uh, at the moment, Oxford has 39 colleges, which means department, vijawe, and each of them have their own building, structure, activities. Uh, what is important is uh, the people who studied, the people who graduated from the university. So, the University of Oxford prides itself um, on having educated four British and at least eight foreign kings, 27 British prime ministers, 30 international leaders like Bill Clinton, for example, or uh, Radek Sikorsky, who lives uh, in Kuyavskop Moscow too, and more than 70 Nobel Prize winners. So, if you compare the number of Nobel Prize winners for the whole Poland and one university in, um, in England, you can see the difference. But um, science is not the, the only fact that um, the Oxford University is uh, great. Look at sport. There are more than 120 Olympic medal winners who also were educating um, at this university. There were seven saints, 86 archbishops, 18 cardinals and one pope. So a really good company if you want to study there. If you think about the University of Oxford right now, uh, like I said before, um, in the years from 2017, it's been nominated, it's been ranked as the number one university in the world based on Times Higher um, uh, Education World University rankings. At the moment, uh, there are about 23,000 students there, so it's much bigger than, for example, the University in Torun. And if we look at the percentages, uh, there are more or less the same amount of uh, girls and boys. So 46% females, 50, um, 54 men, and 40% of those people are foreigners. So people coming from a different country, which means it's not, um, it's not also forbidden for you, for Polish people, for people from kuyaskov Morskie to try and study there. Because um, apart from the fact that there are nearly six candidates for one place um, every year, 
Every year also about 40 Polish students start studying at Oxford. So it's not impossible. Remember about that. If you aim high, if you want to study at the best place in the world, go to Oxford. If we think about the University of Cambridge, it was founded um, about 120 years after Oxford in 1209. Now it's the second oldest university in the, in the world. Uh, and what is funny is that it originated from an argument from an argument of a group of professors at the University of Oxford who decided to actually go away from their alma mater and set up their own, um, their own uh, university not very far away because it's about 60 kilometers or 90 kilometers from there. So Cambridge right now is formed of 31 colleges and over 100 academic departments. The colleges, the colleges in Cambridge also has educa educated many important people, including especially mathematicians, because it's really famous for, um, for science, uh, politicians, philosophers, writers, I'm going to show a couple of them to you in a minute. Uh, but if you look at Nobel Prize winners, 120 Nobel laureates um, were studying at Oxford and 14 British prime ministers and about 200 Olympic medalists also were studying in Cambridge. So if we compare those two uh, universities, uh, if we think about Nobel Prize winners, the um, priority goes to Cambridge, 120 more than any other institution, educational institution in the world. If you think about another important fact, uh, boat races, because it also has been one of the traditions, um, that every year there is a boat race on the River Thames in London, between um, the groups from Cambridge University and Oxford University. Um, they are groups of males and females separately. And so far, 84 times the Cambridge team um, have won the competition. And as you may, uh, as you may know, uh, we also have this kind of competition in Kujawsko Pomorskie. Last Saturday, there was a boat race um, on Vistula River between Torun and Bydgoszcz in many different categories. And check out the news to see who has won this time. Now, speaking about famous alumni, alumni is the plural word for um, Osoba Konchonsa Universitet Wien's absolvent. It comes from the Latin alumnus. And let's have a look at the really famous people who used to study at Oxford and Cambridge. First of all, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom at the moment. Uh, Rowan Atkinson. This is a name that you may not be very familiar with, but if I say Mr. Bean, then probably you will, you will know who, um, who is this person. And funnily enough, this man uh, has studied a really serious subject and he finished the university with great uh, degrees. He was studying electrical engineering. So next time when you watch Mr. Bean and his adventures, think about that he has the, the certificate of the best university in the world. Stephen Hawking, the world's top class uh, physicist. Uh, he was actually a student and then a professor of both universities. Uh, Oxford and Cambridge, so now we can move on to Cambridge and if you think about most famous students and professors of Cambridge, Isaac Newton, so the founder of uh, the theory of gravity. Then we have Prince Charles, uh, king-in-waiting, uh, the longest waiting monarch to be uh, in the history of the United Kingdom, still waiting to become the king. And for those of you who are really into films, Tom Hiddleston, so Loki from the Avengers series, he also studied at the University of Cambridge. The last person I want to show you is not actually a student uh, of any of those universities, but there is a very huge connection between Harry Potter, the wizard of Hogwarts, and um, the University of Oxford, actually, because now we can move on to popular culture. So, if we think about Harry Potter, the whole series was filmed in Oxford, in colleges and cities. So when you watch the film, these are real buildings uh, and the big dining room in Hogwarts, where all the meetings uh, of Gryffindor and all, etc. take place, happen in Christ Church College, and I was lucky to eat there as well, because it still functions as the place to eat for students. 
Now, um, other people who were professors of um, Oxford or Cambridge and created many important things there was uh, the author of Alice in Wonderland, who wrote the story being a professor of literature, and for example, the author of Chronicles of Narnia, C.S. Lewis. So, those of you who really like the story of Prince Caspian and um, Aslan, uh, it was written over there in Oxford. And those of you who love Lord of the Rings and Hobbit, John Tolkien was also the professor of the University of Oxford. If you think about Cambridge, the film was made actually, uh, the Narnia film uh, was made and was filmed in the city as well. But Cambridge is also the birthplace of Winnie the Pooh, which is Kubusz Puchatek in Polish, and Alan Alexander Milne written it when he was a professor of the University of Cambridge. So finally, because we have come up to, to the end of this lesson, just a quick vocabulary revision for those of you who want to remember some things. Alumnus is absolvent, the plural which is alumni. College is Wydział, the department of the university. DNA helix, which is matryca DNA, lub spirala DNA, created by Crick and Watson at Cambridge. Punting, czyli wiosłowanie po rzece, płaską łodzią, a popular uh, way of relaxing in both cities. Spire, I hope you remember that, that is the name of, uh, for Iglica, the top of the very high building. And Winnie the Pooh, this name sounds uh, quite funny in English. This is our Kubusz Puchatek. So I hope you enjoyed these pieces of information about Oxford and Cambridge. And, well, I hope to be here with you in the future. Thank you very much. Jestem przekonany, że pan Grzegorz przypadł do gustu, w szczególności tej części widzów, która jest kobietami. Panie Grzegorzu, rozumiem, że destynacja na wakacje to Cambridge na, na ten moment. Well, I like both of them, so it depends on the flights availability. <laughs> Pan Grzegorz sprawdza nasze umiejętności językowe. One są na bardzo wysokim poziomie, ale dajemy tutaj możliwość popisywania się naszym wykładowcom. Dziękujemy serdecznie. Rozumiem pierwszy raz, ale nie było widać. Nie było widać, nie było słychać naszym widzom i widzkom. Przypominamy, pan Grzegorz z całą pewnością pojawi się jeszcze nie raz na antenie Kujawsko-Pomorskiej E-Szkoły. Zostańcie z nami, do zobaczenia, do usłyszenia. Thank you very much. Bye bye.